Hi guys! That's what everybody says on YouTube, right, when they start their videos. Hi guys! Uh, this is Mark Taylor Canfield, and if you haven't subscribed yet, then please do that. Please subscribe to my channel, Support Independent Media. By the way, the, the MTC Report is brought to you today by yours truly. I'm not uh, accepting any sponsorship or, or ads on these original videos, so if you want to subscribe to my channel, please do so. I would really appreciate it. Please like the video. It does help uh, YouTube to spread uh, my, my videos if you do that. And click the notification bell icon. That way, every time I put up a new video, you can get a notification of that and check it out. And um, yes, a lot of you know me for my music. Today, today I'm not talking about music. Today I'm talking about politics uh, specifically and um, only. And yes, you can all hear me on the Jeff Santos Show, which is uh, broadcast on... Facebook Live, Twitch TV, on radio stations. The Jeff Santa Show is the best talk show in the United States, I believe. Uh, my buddy Jeff's been doing it for over 10 years, and it's a it's a really great show. Um, more intelligent people on that program than in almost any other show I know of. I love Professor Harvey K. He's great on there. Um, the author of FDR on Democracy. Um, I love Melissa Tomlinson from Badass Teachers Association, which is, she's a teacher, an educator, and that's my favorite title for any education group, the Badass Teachers Association, so that's pretty cool. And a uh, lot of other great people on his program, so Jeff has a long history in politics and media, and so he has a great contact list, and he gets some of the greatest people on his program, so... Uh, check it out Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 p.m. Eastern Time, noon to 3 p.m. Pacific Time. And I'm on every Friday, right after P Professor Harvey K. Um, I'm on at 2.30 p.m. Pacific Time every Friday. And usually I start with a little guitar, playing a little guitar. And I guess I could do that today. I mean, you know, I said I wasn't going to do any music, but here you go. Yeah, that's for Vlad <laughs> and a few others I could I could mention, Mr. Trump. Anyway, oh, did I say that? My laptop was running out of power, so I had to plug it back in there. Didn't want it to go off in the middle of this, because this is going to be good. I've been saving up for a long time for this. And by the way, uh, thanks to the Nectar and the Martial Law Band and uh, King 5 Television News and... Uh, the uh, the Mojam folks. Uh, we had a great show on Monday, and I did perform some music there along with my marionette. I uh, have a marionette, <laughs> so we did some performances on stage. But here's the deal, folks. The awful truth is that right now, as we make this video, only about three percent of voters in a recent poll say that they're most concerned about climate change. So, of course, that's something that I'm I'm really interested in up here in the Northwest. Um, and I love Greta Thunberg. I wish she could run for president. But Republicans are spending millions of dollars on campaign ads that are, instead of talking about climate change, of course, they're crassly and falsely blaming the Democrats for inflation and crime, which is an old trick. They're kind of a one-trick pony in this way. But Republicans are leading in the polls, unfortunately, in a lot of the upcoming midterm elections. And Democrats, unfortunately, have an historical record of being unable to motivate a lot of their voters to cast a ballot during non-presidential election years, uh, during these midterm elections. So, not necessarily a good day for the United States of America. The nation's legal system's inability or unwillingness to prosecute Trump or his corrupt crime family is leading to a sense of entitlement and immunity among corrupt politicians in the GOP. They think they're immune from prosecution. 
conservatives have always used immigrants and people of color in order to appeal to racism among white, white voters, so that's nothing new. But let's be honest, folks, a new form of fascism and white supremacy is rearing its ugly head again in this country. So how and why is this happening? Are most voters just ignorant and easily manipulated? Well, the answer to that question is an unqualified yes, but the real shame is the way in which massive amounts of money and political propaganda are being used to subvert U.S. democracy. Because let's face it, folks, if only a small percentage of the resources devoted to campaign ads were diverted to actually helping people in their daily lives, then we would be, we would be much better off as a nation. But instead, we've always had this serious problem with our skewed values and priorities in this country. We love the winner-take-all mentality that amounts to open praise of bullying. And most people favor the rich and wealthy celebrities in our society over decent, hard-working laborers or well-intentioned well political activists. So that's why the middle class is disappearing and people's wages never seem to keep up with inflation or the cost of living. Rents, transportation and food costs skyrocket in our big cities and homelessness increases to massive proportions. I call these ever-expanding houseless encampments economic refugee camps because if they were on an international border, you know, they would receive help from the United Nations and the Red Cross. But instead, they're underneath the bridge in your local city. But nothing is being done to increase the federal minimum wage, to break up harmful monopolies, or to increase taxes on major corporate gains and ridiculously high profits. So CEOs, they're still getting their golden parachutes while the rest of us are left to, well, live in poverty. Our economic system is neither fair nor sustainable, let's be honest. When workers cannot even afford the consumer goods that they manufacture with their own hands and brains, then the game's lost. And no one, short of a few incredibly rich billionaires that the world has never seen, except for a few of those people, no one else will prosper. Everything's fine, of course, with Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates and their ilk because their incomes are skyrocketing and they have no problem paying increasing prices for everything in the marketplace. And anyone suggesting universal health care, free college education, an increased minimum wage or a guaranteed basic income are accused by the right-wingers of being dangerous socialists or worse yet, communists. Well, let me tell you, folks, I'm certainly not worried that communies, <laughs> I'm certainly not worried, yeah, the communies maybe, but I'm certainly not worried that commies are going to take over this country. There are literally about, I don't know, three or four hardcore communists in my city, and they're almost completely powerless to promote their agenda. So I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about the people who are in power now. Because meanwhile, mainstream corporate Democrats are cast by unethical Republican operatives as crazy socialists trying to ruin America. And Fox News spouts this nonsense 24 hours a day to the delight of fascists, racists, and homophobes everywhere. It's not that most people are mean-spirited demagogues like DeSantis or Donald Trump, but they are easily manipulated by fear of immigrants, socialists or Black Lives Matter protesters or whoever the right decides to pull out of the bag as, as the enemy today. The rich and powerful interests have monopolized media markets. So as you travel across the country, you'll hear Fox and religious broadcasting everywhere on radio, at least, but there's no comparable voices on the left or even in the middle of the road. Only the Northeast and the West Coast of the United States have any kind of local progressive media at all, and even there, those voices are still few and far between. Let me tell you, I know. So, meanwhile, as I said, corporate and conservative interests get their way through sheer force of presence throughout the rest of the nation where people like Bernie Sanders is considered a dangerous radical. So, if the forces of regressionism and fear prevail in November, it will be the result of some very cold and calculated economic investments in messages, propaganda, that convey fear and in some cases promote outright hatred. Truth and democracy are being outspent, folks. It's just that simple. And if you can manipulate enough people into believing that an election was stolen or that immigrants are going to take everyone's jobs, then you have succeeded 
in American politics today. Surely we can do much better than this. But alas, I fear the truth does not sell very well in the United States today. This is Mark Taylor Canfield for the MTC Report. Please subscribe, support independent media, and get out there and vote. Yeah.